Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be an overview of my AM skincare routine. This is something that has been highly requested. A lot of you have wanted to see both my AM and PM skincare routine. I thought in order to keep these videos a little bit shorter, we could just split that up so we don't have like a 35 minute long video. So this is part one, my AM skincare routine, and then my PM skincare routine will be coming very soon, don't worry. So if you guys are interested in seeing my morning skincare routine, the step-by-step order in which I apply all of these products, why I use these products, and then of course I will show you how I apply them, then you are in the right spot. I would say that my AM skincare routine is pretty basic. I'm not into frills, I'm not into overly expensive products that are not proven to work. I want effective ingredients and products that I know will work for my skin. So we're gonna get into all of that. Before we do, if you could please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That would help me out a lot and really mean a lot to me because I upload three to five days a week for you guys. If you're interested in more content from me, my Instagram and TikTok handle are right here for you. All right, let's jump into it. Also, I wanted to quickly say before we get into the actual products that I used on this specific day, I of course have a lot of other products within each of these categories that I absolutely loved. Some of them I didn't include in this video because I feel like I've talked about them quite a bit. So like the Dermatology SPFs, that is one example. But this is not representative of my entire skincare collection. I am starting to put out skincare collection videos by category. Of course, I couldn't do that all in once because it would be way too long. I already have my eye cream collection video and review up and I will be doing cleansers, serums, moisturizers, all of that. So stay tuned if you want to see everything that I have and would recommend. But this is just like a small example. So the very first thing I do is cleanse my skin. And this is actually not something that I used to do because I felt like it left my skin feeling a little bit dry and stripped. But I have found that if I pick the right cleansers, then I don't have that issue. So I have combination skin. What I do every single day, both in the AM and PM, is just pick a cleanser and moisturizer based on how my skin is feeling. So if I'm feeling extra dry, then I will use products that are designed for dry skin. If I'm feeling a little bit more oily than normal, I will use oily skin products. So I have a little bit of everything, which I feel like is actually nice for skincare reviews because then you guys can hear both sides of it. But the reason that I wanted to start cleansing in the AM as well is I was just doing more research on cleansing and the benefits of it. Of course, we all know we want to cleanse in the PM, remove everything that our skin has come in contact with during the day, but it's important to do that in the AM as well because even though we aren't exposed to as much, we often are still putting products on our skin that have the potential to compromise our skin barrier. So one of those things for me is tretinoin. And if you use a retinoid, then you know that retinoids have the potential to irritate and damage our skin barrier. So it's important for me to cleanse in the morning to remove any remnants of products that I have on from the night before and just help to refresh the skin and reinforce the health of my skin barrier. So the cleanser I have been obsessed obsessed with at the moment is the Vana Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser. I have a lot of skin irritation right now, which you guys will probably be able to see in the video clips of me applying these products. I have a lot of redness and just kind of like burning feelings around my mouth area. I don't know exactly what's causing it. I've been testing so many products for you guys and I think, I mean, that's probably just why all of the different ingredients I'm putting on my skin. But I also don't know if there's one specific thing that I've started to use that's causing further irritation. So whenever my skin is feeling sensitive or irritated, I reach for Vanna Cream. It's pretty much the only thing that doesn't further irritate my skin in those situations. I love this cleanser. This brand in general is amazing if you have sensitive skin, acne prone skin or certain skin conditions because it's free of a lot of common skin irritants. So it's free from dyes, fragrance, masking fragrance, essential oils, formaldehyde, and other preservatives that are known to potentially irritate the skin. So super awesome option. It's also affordable, which of course I love, and I really feel like this cleanses my skin well. It doesn't leave it feeling dry or stripped. It also doesn't leave my skin feeling greasy or oily. There's no weird residue. It just is really nice. The consistency is great. I know a lot of you guys love this as well. 
it's just good. Can't say enough good things. Thank goodness for this cleanser. Another cleanser that I really love is the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser. I've talked about this quite a few times, but if I'm feeling extremely irritated and I'm having skin sensitivity going on, this is not something that I can reach for because I find that it does just burn my skin a little bit. So this is a great option, but not when I'm feeling sensitive. And then I've showed the difference between these two cleansers before, but this one is definitely more of a liquidy gel, whereas this one is a little bit thicker. And I would say this one, at least for me, definitely gets a little bit foamier than this, but neither of them are like a true foam. Of course, the cleanser that you choose is just really going to depend on your skin type, so you can work with your dermatologist there to figure out what would be best for you. I, of course, can let you know if there are certain products that are formulated or better suited for certain skin types, but at the end of the day, everybody's skin is different, everyone's skin responds differently, and I'm not a dermatologist, so please don't ever think that you should take my advice over that of a dermatologist, and just because something works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you, even if it sounds like we have the same skin type. So really the only way to know is to work with your dermatologist and test it out for yourself. But great options. If you have really dry skin, the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser could be one that you love instead of this one. You can't really go wrong there. Okay, after cleansing my skin, I go in with one of my acne topical prescriptions that I have from my dermatologist, and that is called Axone. So this is a 7.5% Dapsone gel. I use this in combination with Tretinoin to help to treat and manage my hormonal acne. I am very acne prone, and I get the chin jawline breakouts that I know a lot of you guys are dealing with. So this has helped me so, so much. At the time when my dermatologist prescribed this to me, she said it was the only topical medication that existed to help to treat that cystic acne that pops up. So I don't know if more topicals like this have been created since, but definitely worth talking to your dermatologist about if you suffer from hormonal acne and you feel like you just can't get it under control because that has helped me a ton. I also have videos on how I manage my hormonal acne, so everything will be linked below that I feel like relates to this video. The reason that I put that on bare skin after cleansing is because that's what my dermatologist told me to do. So if you use any kind of topical product from the dermatologist, always make sure that you're asking them the order in which you should apply that product, if it should go on bare skin, if it should go on top of a serum, anything like that, just make sure to follow what they recommend. The next thing I do is go in with my vitamin C serum. This is the Dermatology Advanced CE Ferulic Serum. This is an anti-aging serum with 15% L-ascorbic acid, 1% vitamin E, and 0.5% ferulic acid. It also has peptides in it and sodium hyaluronate, so it just makes my skin look so glowy and healthy. I'm obsessed with this stuff. Vitamin C is also great at helping to brighten the skin. So if you have hyperpigmentation or acne scars or just discoloration, this could be a great addition to your skincare routine to help to brighten up those dark spots. So a very versatile product. I love this one. You guys also know I've raved about dermatology so many times here on this channel. So again, I'll spare you, but link everything below. This one is a great option because it's not just a standalone vitamin C serum. It has other ingredients in it that have amazing benefits to the skin and the addition of vitamin E and ferulic acid just means that you're getting an even more potent antioxidant effect. Love, love, love. So how I use this is once my skin is fully dried and after I have applied this Axone gel, I apply two to three drops to my entire face and just rub that in and I am good to go. And that is the only serum that I use every single morning, no matter what. If I'm having other skin concerns or feel like I could use a little bit of something else, then I may go in with an additional serum, but it's not something I do every single day. So if you guys wanna see a part two on those kinds of extra products that I may use definitely let me know but I thought I would just stick to only the things that I do daily in this video and that serums it after that I am ready to go in with eye cream so one I have been loving is the Versed zero G soothing eye cream this has algae extract in it and peptides I talked about this a lot in my eye cream collection and review video and it's amazing the formulation is beautiful and for me it does work really well underneath makeup I am very picky about the eye creams that I use underneath makeup because a lot of the times they can break up concealer and powder but this one doesn't do that I really really love this and it just feels 
feels lightweight underneath the eye area while still providing adequate hydration. So I always make sure I am adding something hydrating under the eye area. The skin around our eyes is very prone to fine lines, crow's feet, wrinkles, because it's much thinner than the skin on the rest of our face. So make sure you are protecting the skin around your eyes, of course, on the rest of your face, but you actually don't need eye cream to do that. So you can absolutely just skip the eye cream, not buy an additional product, and use a moisturizing cream or lotion instead. Whatever works best for you and whatever you find sits well underneath makeup is great, but you can definitely just use your moisturizer. You really don't need a separate product. The reason I love this is because it has really great ingredients in it that are known to help to replenish and soothe the skin and things that I love as far as an eye cream goes, again, because of how prone that area is to fine lines and wrinkles. However, there are a lot of moisturizers that have amazing ingredients in them as well. So what I'm trying to say is eye cream is not necessary, but hydrating the under eye area is for sure necessary. Don't skip that. After that, I will go in with my moisturizer. I have a lot of different moisturizers that I choose from just depending on how my skin feels. I have ones that are very lightweight and gel-like and great for oily skin, all the way to thicker creams like this that are ideal for dry skin or irritated skin. So because I was having that skin sensitivity this day, I decided to use my Vanna Cream Moisturizing Cream. This one is for sure a bit thicker than other moisturizers that I am used to using, but it is so great if I'm having skin irritation. So I really recommend that as well. I actually prefer this to their moisturizing lotion. I don't know, even though it's thicker, something about the formulation just feels a little bit nicer to me. So it works for me. I don't have any issues with this clogging my pores or feeling too heavy great option. And of course, I apply this moisturizer to my neck. Make sure you're not forgetting to moisturize the neck area. I basically always use a thicker moisturizing cream like this on my neck area and never something that's light and gel-like because I want intense hydration on my neck. We've talked about how I am very scared about my neck as I start to age. I feel like it's going to be a wrinkly mess. So I always do a thicker moisturizing cream that has occlusive agents in it because that's actually going to act as a protective shield, if you will, on your skin to really help to lock in that moisture so you don't have excessive moisture loss. If that moisturizer is too thick for you or if you want one that has additional ingredients that are really great for the skin, the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion is one that I've been reaching for a ton as well. This is definitely more lightweight and is a really good option for those of you that have normal skin. It also says it's for dry skin types. Again, I tend to lean more oily and this works for me. So really just depends again on your specific skin type. But I feel like this is the most universal moisturizer that CeraVe has. Just thinking through all their different moisturizing lotions right now and creams, I feel like this is one that would work on the most skin types. Like their PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion is definitely better for people with oily skin. Their moisturizing cream is definitely going to be better for people with dry skin. So if you feel like your combo, your normal skin, you don't really know, this could be a good one to try. This has three essential ceramides in it and hyaluronic acid. So you're getting some awesome ingredients in there for the skin. And the formulation is super nice. You guys can see here. Definitely lighter weight than Vanna Cream, which is right here. And after that, and after I've given my moisturizer enough time to fully dry and sink into the skin, I am ready to apply SPF. So I always go in with two applications of SPF every single day, no matter what, no matter what time of year it is, even if I'm going to spend the entire day inside. I always, always, always apply two applications of SPF and make sure that at least one of those SPFs is tinted. If you wanna know more about that and why tinted sunscreens are very important to include in your AM skincare routine, I'll put a card for it here and link it below and I also talk about the two applications there. The first SPF I used is the Cetaphil Redness Relieving Daily Facial Moisturizer. This is a broad spectrum SPF 20 for redness prone skin and it has mineral active ingredients only. So no chemical filters, great option if you have sensitive or acne prone skin. This one I really, really am loving and I was shocked at the relief that I felt upon applying this. I hadn't used it yet with active irritation and I was a little bit nervous that it would actually just end up irritating my skin further but it really did help. I felt some relief just on the stinging and burning that I was feeling, and I felt like the redness did subside a little bit. So that's great if you're somebody that has really red skin or you get irritated easily as well. 
definitely a sunscreen to check out, but not one that I ever just use by itself because it's only an SPF 20. So I always make sure that I am using at least an SPF 30, if not SPF 50 in combination with this and also every day. The second SPF that I used is the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. This is a broad spectrum SPF 50. Again, only mineral active ingredients. I'm obsessed with this. I've talked about it so many times. It is such a good option. This one definitely has a less apparent tint than the Cetaphil one. So I will just show you guys quickly. So here is Color Science, here is Cetaphil. You can see there is a definite difference in the level of pigmentation there. This one really just does have a peachy tint to help to remove any white cast that you may experience. So it doesn't leave a white cast on my skin, but it's not something that gives me really any color. Versus that Cetaphil SPF does actually give me a little bit of color. And with two applications of that, that's something that you could just use in place of a tinted moisturizer, in my opinion. Definitely not going to be as much as a CC cream or a foundation, but if you're somebody that really doesn't like to wear a lot of makeup or you don't want something that is even medium coverage, like you're a very light coverage kind of makeup wearer, then you might really enjoy this. As far as how much SPF to apply, it's recommended that you use at least one fourth teaspoon, but I have heard all the way up to one half teaspoon as well. It's hard to give a universal recommendation because people have different sized faces you know so what fully covers my face may not fully cover yours and vice versa so it's just really important to make sure that you are getting those two applications of spf in so that you are completely covered don't forget to apply spf to your eyelids that's very important and especially underneath this eye area again the crow's feet the wrinkles around here we need to make sure we have spf fully covering that area so we're not taking any risks and then of course, I also make sure that I am adding SPF to my neck. I apply SPF to my entire body, but the neck is very important. And I use two applications of SPF on my neck as well. So this one is the Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen. This is an active mineral-based sunscreen. So this actually does have zinc oxide, which is a mineral active ingredient, as well as octocrylene, which is a chemical active ingredient. This is one that I pretty much only use on my neck and chest and the rest of my body and not my face because it's definitely a little bit thicker than some of the SPFs that I have so I just don't love the consistency for my face it's not bad but not my favorite and then because it has octocrylene in there I just it makes me nervous anytime I see chemical active ingredients in an SPF I'm very wary and that doesn't mean that I can't use them at all because you guys know I love the dermatology SPFs and those are the same type of SPF they are a mix between mineral active ingredients and chemical active ingredients those don't irritate my skin those don't break me out but the formulation is a lot nicer and thinner compared to this so this is one I really do enjoy for my neck and the rest of my body and then I make sure to wait a full 10 minutes after my first application of SPF before going in with my second application and that is it that's my entire morning skincare routine I told you guys I'm really not into frills or anything unnecessary so hopefully after hearing that all broken down for you step by step and also watching me apply it to my face you can see it's really not this extensive 50 step skincare routine skincare can feel so overwhelming and nobody has time to sit there for an hour going through this huge extensive skincare routine so I hope that this helped and made you guys feel better all of these products I would recommend and the order in which I applied them I would recommend as well of course with the exception of any topicals and listening to your dermatologist there so I hope you guys enjoyed this video you will definitely have to let me know in the comments below are you going to change anything in your AM skincare routine after watching this video are you interested in any of these products or do you currently use some of them I would love to know we can chat there if there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel make sure to leave that in the comments below otherwise my next video will be up in a few days so until then I hope you have a great few days